Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me for pricing. Tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a beautifully preserved transitional era, newly vintage Rolex Oyster Perpetual Submariner date, the 16800 model made from approximately 1977 to 1987 is now properly vintage. It's hard for me to believe because I was born in that era, but this is a timepiece with a tritium dial, perforated lugs, a transitional caliber 3035, and a correct period 93150 bracelet. In other words, it is the real deal. A watch that is still durable enough to use as a dive watch and still functional enough to operate as designed, but nostalgic enough to be distinctly different from the watches made new today. The sizing will be familiar. 40 millimeters in diameter, you can see that the watch is a reasonable 12.8 millimeters thick, 47.6 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and then there's a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now throwing the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see one of the ways this watch is different is that the old 93150 with its 593 end links has a pivoted end link profile, so no solid end links. It's shorter across the wrist, so I could recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. This is a good unisex option. It's low enough that you could fit it underneath a cuff or a sleeve, so it can be your formal attire piece, to be sure, as that's primarily where vintage watches often find themselves used. They turn out to be desk divers, and this watch would be superb for the office. The bracelet is a period piece, as it features a L code, which is proximate to 1987, and the serial number of the watch is about 9.3 million, so these two things are of concurrent vintage, meaning that they are both correct in terms of reference, but they are also correct in terms of age. And the hollow center links and the hollow end links give it a different feel. A lot of these older 93150s, they, they become ropey. They develop too much play. This one has the characteristic vintage Rolex rattle, but it retains sports watch structural integrity, so it remains tenacious, and it remains solid, secure, and confidence-inspiring on the wrist. Now, you can see removable links, even then, were fixed with screws. Um, there is a fold-out dive extension built into the clasp, and then we have a set of divots drilled inside the clasp that allow you to use your strap tool to restation the bracelet inside the clasp so you can effectively adjust it using the fold out, using the removable links, and using those divots to restation the anchoring point of the bracelet. Now there's a clamshell lock. You can see that the embossed patterns on the clasp are still quite well defined given its age. It has been refinished, though sympathetically and professionally, and you'll see that when we get to the case. As I mentioned, this is a watch that is well preserved. You can still see evidence of the original factory bevels on the edge of the lugs, and you can see from side to side and end to end, the lugs are remarkably full in volume and symmetrical in shape. There's no denting. You don't have problems like the spring bar protruding through the edge. This is still a watch that includes a great deal of the original factory metal on the flanks of the lugs. You can see it's satin finished on the top and then polished on the flank. We have a trip lock crown right here. Screw down. The watch was 300 meters water resistant back in the day, and the 16800 was in many regards uh, the first of the modern Rolex subs. And this watch has a lot going for it. It has a unidirectional bezel rather than the previous bidirectional bezel. It features a, a gloss dial with applique white gold indices rather than the previous printed dials. It features a sapphire crystal. It is a 300 meter case and it has a high beat movement. So there were a lot of changes for this generation. It also included a quick set date. So what you see here is a correct original tritium bezel insert. It's anodized aluminum. It is a 120 click bezel that still feels crisp and precise to this day and can still line up with the minute hand to give you impromptu zero to 60 minute timing. Now the dial, of course, well preserved. It features uh, one of the later examples of a 16800 dial. So you've got the glossiness with the applique white gold rather than matte with uh, printed features. And all of it's in great shape. Internally, I would call this dial a 10 out of 10 in terms of its physical condition. The movement inside the case is a transitional reference known as the 3035. It preceded the 3135, um, and functionally it's almost the same. So automatic winding bidirectional with a 45 to 48 hour power reserve. You can see that it features modern refinements such as a quick set date and a hacking seconds function. You can see open nines and open sixes on the date disk. 
and the watch does include that quick set mechanism, not present on previous Submariners. It is a 27 joule movement rather than the 31 of the later 3135, and there were some changes regarding the train wheels as well as the speed of the barrel, but functionally you get the same beat rate, the same quick set, the same hacking, the same chronometer certification, the same power reserve. It is a COSC certified chronometer adjusted in five positions. It's free sprung and it has a handmade overcoil hairspring to, in the case of the free sprung architecture, make it more shock tolerant. And in the case of the overcoil, allow it to keep better time in every orientation with respect to gravity. The biggest structural difference between this movement and the later 3135 is that this is a balanced cock whereas the 3135 features a full balance bridge, though in practice they're going to be equally durable on the wrist. This is a timepiece that has it all going on. Fun vintage look and appeal, but modern spec, finish, and materials. It's in good shape, but it's not a time capsule piece, so it's not too fine to wear. It's got its original period bracelet and clasp, and yet it wears very much like a modern watch. It's comfortable, durable, and still swimmable, unlike a lot of 50s, 60s, and 70s Submariners. So reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.